When I was listening to Fox News and they said that uh, Aaron Hernandez is going to have uh, his head chopped off and they're going to examine his brain for damage, I was thinking about that movie Young Frankenstein with the brain Abby Normal. Uh, again, terrible waste of great talent and uh, terrible human being. It's unfortunate that this had to go that way. I think there were 27. Whatever brain damage they find was not caused by football, but something else went haywire. Look, on another topic that I was really going to open up on today, did you know that liberal media, and I know that that's somewhat redundant when it comes to what you have, especially at the national level, but did you know that liberal media doesn't appear to like President Trump? I was home yesterday. I had an appointment. I was switching providers. I, I, I dropped... CenturyLink. They don't know it yet, but I'm taking the equipment back today. And I was waiting for a fellow to come by from Cable One. And I had the TV set on while I was waiting for the change, uh, realizing that I might have an interruption somewhere later in the afternoon, so I wanted to catch up on as much news as I could catch up on. And our story broke out of Paris, France. And it was about a shooting on the Champs-Élysées, uh, which is the... Uh, Main Boulevard that runs down to the the uh, Arc uh, de Triomphe, and your first thought when you hear something like this, come on, let's be honest about it. Did you think it was some wayward French Huguenot who's still upset because 400 years ago the King of France, who was no longer around either, but was mean to somebody who was a Huguenot, and that this was an attempt to get revenge for 400 years of pent up anger? Or perhaps did you think it was a, a wayward Catholic who's unhappy with France's secular drift? Or perhaps you thought it was someone who was angered by a, 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 a European football loss uh, by the French national team, and they just decided to go out and settle some scores with just average bystanders and police officers on the street. No, you didn't think any of those things. You probably thought that's likely a Mohammedan who's, uh, who's out there firing with an AK-47 into a crowd. And I, I'm sure, I'm sure that was your initial thought, because we're conditioned for it. Why are we conditioned for something like that? Because it has happened all too often. So the President of the United States, about 45 minutes after the news broke, I had the television on, the news broke, and about 45 minutes afterward, the President of the United States came out and held a joint news conference with the Prime Minister of Italy. Now, the Italians are very concerned about this situation, too. Uh, those of you who might be liberals would be geographically challenged. We don't obviously teach a lot of geography in schools anymore and no civics and the like. Great column today, if you can look it up online or see it in a paper somewhere, by Pat Buchanan about how the, the country has devolved into all of these different tribal units and we may not get it back. And that's because we don't have civics education in school, which is something that you may remember State Senator Jim Patrick was fighting for a couple of years ago here in Idaho and mainstream media just tore him a new one uh, because, you know, we, we, we might have to actually teach patriotism and, and love of country and the like. They couldn't have that. But I was, I was waiting for the Italian prime minister to address this issue because Italy is a next-door neighbor to France. Now, I'm sure most of you know that, but there are liberals out there who tune in now and then, and we have to help them along. You know, It's like drawing them a picture. <laughs> you know, it'll connect the dots one by one, and it might sometimes actually get through their thick craniums. While they were talking to the president about this attack, the first question came from John Roberts of Fox News. This was what Mr. Mr. Trump had to say, and I want you to take a listen to it for a moment. That's a terrible thing, and it's a very, very terrible thing that's going on in the world today, but it looks uh, like another terrorist attack, and uh, what can you say? It just never ends. We have to be strong, and we have to be vigilant. It looks like another terrorist attack. Well, it sure did. First of all, uh, if, if I went out on the street tomorrow and I was angry because my team lost a playoff game and I started shooting up and down the street, would that be terrorism? Because I would bet that the people who are running and trying to hide from my spray of bullets would be quite terrified. So when you define terrorism, driving down the highway a few weeks ago, I was on Route 30 going over to Burley. And all of a sudden, an 18-wheeler decided to dodge a pothole and got over in my lane. That was quite terrifying, although he managed to get back quickly enough that it, we didn't have to worry about a head-on collision. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking to you today. It was quite terrifying. So defining what terrorism is and what terror happens to be, I think, is a pretty simple thing. 
I don't even know. Can we listen to that again? Did he even infer that it was Islamic terrorism? That's a terrible thing, and it's a very, very terrible thing that's going on in the world today. But it looks uh, like another terrorist attack. And uh, what can you say? It just never ends. And we have to be strong and we have to be vigilant. Oh, he didn't say it was Islamic terrorism. He just said it looks like another terrorist attack. Well, over at MSDNC, the mouthpiece of the Democrat National Committee, this could not stand. Chuck Todd immediately took to the air and denounced the president for having, well, he must have seen it on TV and thought so, and so he made that statement. And then Lion Brian Williams chimed in and said, well, he doesn't have all the facts in. You know, we hear people like me, Brian Williams, I've always got my facts straight. We here in the media have to. Sure, Brian. <laughs> That's why you took that long, extended vacation. That's why? Right. That's why the New York Times said that Donald Trump didn't get a big turnout from the New England Patriots and Barack Obama did two years ago? Uh-huh. Except, of course, people were sitting in chairs and weren't in the picture, so uh, the picture didn't give you an accurate, accurate look. But, you know, they jumped to a conclusion there, and the, the sports editor at the Times is saying, oh, I'm a dummy. We knew that. We knew that. You don't have to tell us. It, it was obvious. But at least you're being honest for a change, which is rare in mainstream media, it seems, any longer. So you've got all of these, uh, these, uh, these, these fellows over at MSDNC, Williams, who you couldn't trust. And then you've got uh, the macho man Chuck Todd. I mean, you, boy, if you saw Chuck Todd coming down a dark alley, ooh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it, I, he and Chuck Schumer, if the two of them were together, you'd really be worried. So Chuck Todd and, and Brian Williams are running down the president saying he's jumping to conclusions here. I thought immediately, gee, Paris, gunman with an AK-47. Aha, I bet he's a Mohammedan, was my first thought. And I bet most Parisians thought the same thing, too. It's also very possible that in the time that news of this attack broke, now media starts covering it, as I said, about 45 minutes before the president's news conference which means it probably happened 15 minutes to half an hour before that, which means somebody in the Oval Office on the president's security team said to him, hey, this is going on, and it looks to be terrorism. So the president just didn't pull it out of the air. Can we make that clear? Unlike MSDNC, he's surrounded by the national intelligence crowd and various other people who are working in close conjunction with allied nations in Europe. I'm telling you that, that the media is so out of control in this country, they will never, ever get any respect back. They've, they've shattered it completely. And you may have issues with Donald Trump, but the media reaction has gone so far beyond the pale that nothing that you hear any longer, you have to take everything with a grain of salt. You've got to make your own conclusions. It also tells us, and we're hearing the media is now being critical because they're saying that now that it has been confirmed, it was an Islamic terrorist. I guess they'll have to translate that and though and say he was screaming, God is great. <clears throat> or however that would translate into French from the Allah Akbar. Well, the AP would do that. And then the AP says, well, you know, it is true. The guy in California wasn't really killing in the name of Islam. He was just killing because he didn't like white people. But when you actually have to translate what he said, that harms your credibility as well. It looks like you're trying to cover it up. That's what it looks like. And that's not the job of media. Media says, well, Donald Trump is trying to cover up his tax returns. Yet you're covering up what people are saying at crime scenes? I'm sorry, but again, you can't have it both ways. And this is what they're trying to do. The, the, the fact of the matter is media has now transitioned since we now know it was a Mohammedan. Media now is transitioning saying, well, they're doing this because they're being spurred on by Marine Le Pen the nationalist leader in France, she's running for the leadership there. She's in an election Sunday. She will likely come out of it, not maybe with a majority, but with enough for a runoff election. Is one of the top two vote-getters. I believe that'll be in June. And then she could be elected the president of that country. I've never had a lot of respect for the French. But I was watching some of these police officers after this happened last night. There were pictures from the street after everything was walled off and the tape was stretched out. And some of these guys walking around in vests with their rifles, I thought, now they're real men. But the only manly individual in French politics, and I don't mean that in a, in a, you know, in a sense of her looks or anything like that, but with a big set, would be Marine Le Pen. And she may well be the person God has put on this planet to stem the tide, 
just like at the gates of Vienna, the tide was stem stemmed hundreds and hundreds of years ago as the Mohammedan armies were sweeping across Europe. And, and, I, and this is why media doesn't like her, because she's, she's talking about deporting criminals. <laughs> well, you know, what are you supposed to let them do? Roam the streets and keep killing people? So media says it's her fault that these people are acting up because, but here's the thing. They're acting up, and they probably are, to help her campaign. Why do the Mohammedans want her to be elected? Because they're gearing up for the final battle, and they believe she'll bring it on. Well, if you're going to have to have a final battle, why not do it now? Because 20 years from now, when there's three times as many of them on your streets, it's going to be a little more difficult to maintain control. This is the challenge right now of Western civilization. No matter what anybody out there tells you, it's the challenge of Western civilization. We're at 38. It's 817. Bill Colley with you on Top Story this morning on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News 1310.com. Caller, you're on the air. Good morning, Bill. You know, our world is going down the tubes. But, you know, I, the media and everybody else have hijacked every word in the book and, and turned it into certain meanings. You know, this whole thing with terrorism, now every time you say the word terrorism, it, it has to equate with a lot. Islam. Well, I hate to tell you, but the college students, the leftist college students that are asking for beheading of, of Republicans and everything else is an act of terrorism. Yeah. It, it, you're terrorizing somebody. It's just like the word assault weapon. I, I can assault somebody with a knife. Does that make it an assault knife? No. It, the word has a meaning, and we need to stop hijacking it for something else. But, you know, it Terrorism can come in all forms and sizes with from all different types of people. But terrorism nonetheless, anytime you're terrorizing somebody for a reason, whether you don't like them because of their color, their religion, or anything else, it's terrorism, and that's all there is to it. Well, we have, we have a long-running long battle with the definition of that word, but 30 years ago it was a reference to what was going on in the Troubles in Northern Ireland. And all over the world, we've, we've had this situation going on for centuries where people have these various tribal rivalries. This notion that somehow everybody else's culture is equal to ours. And you'll hear all the time the left will say, well, Christians commit violence. Timothy McVeigh committed violence. Timothy McVeigh, I always have to go back to this. Yes, he'd been an altar boy till about the age of 12. Then he stopped going to church. Then he became an atheist. And there is no evidence that he said before he set that bomb off, in the name of Christ... No, that didn't happen. He wasn't killing in the name of Christianity. And your liberal friends out there who try to make those comparisons, they know that they're lying. But they have to do it to try to cover. And then, what? as I said yesterday, they'll start shouting, blah, 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 if you try to set them straight, because they know better. We have a short break. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. There'll be terrorists out in a few days at Berkeley. We'll talk about that coming up in a few minutes, too. I may go shopping this weekend for some new dress shirts. I did take up the uh, offer people made me on uh, the recommendations about the, the copper pan. I bought the red copper pan the other day, but I need some new dress shirts because the last time I've had to go to events where I have to put on a, a dress shirt and a tie, uh, most recently Easter, uh, Easter Mass, the shirts have been too big around the neck. The reason that is is because of the total body transformation system, which took four inches off my neck in a matter of just a few months. And I wanted to mention as well, it's not a yo-yo diet. It's scientifically proven, and it does deliver results. It's backed up by a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee and also backed up by a brilliant team of scientists from some of the best-known research universities in America. And I wanted to point out as well, you'll burn six times more fat and lose eight times more weight than normal results from diet and exercise alone. The meal replacement plan is healthier than the meals that you're going to be eating. And in most cases, because I know what I was eating before, and that was not necessarily always the healthiest thing I could find. It also will cost you about the same as the meals that you're replacing. You still get to eat a sustainable amount of calories every day. And you get to eat foods that taste good. That's not an issue. The average person will drop 22 pounds and lose 4 inches off his or her waist in 60 days. And I wanted to point out as well, if you'd like to know more, Don Chandler 
was also a client. He lost in excess of 50 pounds. Don's telephone number, if you'd like to learn more, is 208-731-3560. Don is here in Twin Falls, and the number again is 731-3560. Stay 24, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Now, I may have had a break with some uh, former allies in this community when it comes to refugee resettlement from some of those Islamic countries. I don't believe that we can put these people on cattle cars and ship them out of here. But I don't think that we, I'm, I'm fully supportive of the president's pause. The numbers right now you could say are manageable. And, and until we get this thing straightened out, and the numbers are way down, we should point out too, from people who are coming here from some of those lands. Uh, well, even the immigration numbers everywhere are way down. But I'm telling you, we have to have a well-thought-out plan so that we don't become France. 825, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 13. There's a reason Donald Trump got elected. There's well going to be a reason Marine Le Pen is going to be elected. There's a reason British voters voted for Brexit and likely will do it a second time. These are all because people are fed up with the elites. We have a caller with us. Caller, you're up next on News Radio 1310, KLIX. I totally agree, Bill. And the, the thing that people still don't understand is that. Islam is a theocracy to conquer the world, either by jihad or by population jihad. And that, you know, by bringing all these people in here, we've already got those enclaves and their Sharia law already in some cities in the United States. And so they're hiding behind this religious thing. So we're going to give them religious equality and they will not assimilate. And so is a culture that's totally foreign. It's like, like having a, a virus come into your system. And the only way you can do it is stop it and put some things in place. But it's a theocracy, and the, if they read the Koran and follow it, they're commanded. If we don't convert, they kill us. I'm sorry, it's a religion of hate and killing. And yes, not all Muslims follow the Koran, but those that do and become Followers of Muhammad, look at the guy in Fresno. That could happen in Twin Falls just as well sure. as in Fresno. Fresno, San Bernardino, Orlando, the list grows. I keep hearing people say, well, we haven't had any of these major terrorist attacks here. What? What newspapers are they reading? What TV stations are they watching? And what radio are they listening to? Absolutely. Well, you know, if you, I've got a, a relative that listens to NPR. And it's just nothing but socialist propaganda <laughs> and thinks that, you know, Trump is the worst thing that ever came along. It's unbelievable. But if you listen to that kind of garbage day in and day out, you'll become radicalized, too, to the socialist uh, uh, agenda. Yeah. And I thank you much for the call. I, I read some research uh, done by a professor. I mentioned him on the show the other day. Uh, he had been at UCLA, and he said that, Americans who are exposed to liberal media tend to start believing and becoming more liberal. But if you were to take media out of the factor altogether, they would be right of center. You're up next, and you're on the air on KLIX. Well, I guess that's a good thing why I don't listen to media, <laughs> uh, except I know where to get my facts from. I just wanted to comment on uh, what the liberal media, and I don't understand. These these idiots, they see these things happening over in Europe. They know that the Muslims from the Middle East and East Africa, wherever, they're going into Europe. It's like, and these things are happening. These things didn't just happen overnight just because someone's wine went rotten, you know. It, it, this is really stupid in these liberal idiots here, they spawn the, in the media, they spawn these stupid movements like Antifa, which are basically social, a uh, little left-wing Nazis, you know, and it's ridiculous. I don't understand how people can become so stupid. <laughs> well, again, and I thank you for the call. It's exposure to, again, Mainstream media, which is synonymous for left-wing media. I have to take a break shortly. Uh, we're about a quarter of the way through the show. We'll be talking firearms in the next hour. 
Uh, gear up if you can, because that battle is coming. It's 38. We're at uh, 829. And just a reminder, the weather forecast looks dismal next week. Next week, it looks, uh, some days we won't even break 50, which means, of course, your furnace will be working throughout the month of April in many cases. And for those of you who are thinking it's been overworked, it needs some service, give your friends a call at Ramsey Heating and Electric in Burley. They'll come out and they'll get the job done right and done right the first time. Problem-free, cozy winners are found at Ramsey Heating and Electric, 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Telephone number is 678-0459, Ramsey Heating and Electric, where they sell warm winters and cool summers. And our abysmal weather forecast (laughs) is brought to you by the good folks at Mountain Home Auto Ranch in Mountain Home.